Welcome to segment number two of my recent visit with Bruce and his fish room. This is going to be about his 38 gallon fish tank garden. And again, the plants look amazing as well as the fish. So please join us for this conversation explaining how he accomplishes the beautiful success of plant growth and fish in this second segment of several segments. Okay. Uh, it's two different kinds of Amazon sort of plants in it as well. This is a 38 gallon you said? Yeah. You can see one just to the right of the main Amazon plant and there's one all the way far right as well. And they don't have as, uh, they don't grow as tall or get as many leaves on them, but uh, they do well. Now, we were talking just before we started recording, the different varieties of Amazon swords. Yeah. Are these off of the main one that we saw in the big tank, or are these no, but maybe you know, different varieties? The one in that 55 gallon, for example, I bought uh, what they call the mother, right. mother plant and an extra large plant. Yeah. And when I got it, I found out what they had done was they had taken four Amazon sword plants and just group them together and their roots intertwined and everything. That's what made one big plant. Right. They called it one plant, but it was really right. four plants. Okay. But these are some of the baby plants off that or there's some of the, when no, you find it separated? Just a, just a different kind of Amazon. Okay. And it's not from the same plant at all. All right, now the one big Amazon that we're looking at here in this tank looks the same as the one in what I'll call the big tank over here. Yeah, that's that's those two are the same kind. And I realized as we were looking at the 55 gallon that there's actually three plants there as we mentioned. And over here it's just one plant, isn't it? That's right. And when you give them the room and the light and the, the fertilizer, they yep. grow so beautifully. Oh, yeah, they do. I mean, and they're so easy. I mean, it, it's hard yeah. to do wrong by an Amazon sword. You're right about that. They're strong. Yeah. And my favorite plant is still the Madagascar lace plant. but. Well, I agree with you, but it's hard to keep. Yeah. They develop algae on them too easily and succumb to the algae. You know, two things we're going to talk about in a minute. One is snails, because I see a lot of snails here. But secondly, uh, the algae. When I was dealing with this maybe a year ago, I had major algae problems, especially in the boat tank. I and I do not have any algae problem in that tank. I have. Uh, two large Indian algae eaters, which are right. constantly at work. Uh, there's uh, the uh, there's a couple other fish that also seem. Oh, the uh, <clears throat> red-tailed shark, for example, is always cleaning those plants, especially the Madagascar lace plant. Okay. But I'm thinking that because it's so heavily planted, the algae doesn't get a chance to grow because the nutrients are being taken up by those plants. That's true. And but you have enough CO2 in there to feed your regular plants and have the algae not develop as well. That's, that's, it's hard to find that proper balance. I, I must admit I've been following, you know, I started fertilizing when you and I got to back together again after yeah. all those years yeah. and you explained that there was a liquid CO2, I didn't know that, and how important it was. So I've been using the liquid CO2 every day in yeah, all of my too. tanks yeah, too. and as a result the plants are growing well and then yeah. once a week I use that leaf, uh, leaf, leaf tone and then once a quarter I put in the plant tabs okay. under the major plants yeah, and well, that, that's all good that's good food for them and so that I think is causing them to grow so well that's using up the nutrients and as I had no algae issue. That's right. Because I would always lose the Madagascar lace plant algae, you're it's right. It's hard to have that balance. Matter of fact, this 55 that's over here, I had to scrape a lot of algae off it recently, but I think I've been overfeeding because uh, one of the discus in there has, has trouble getting enough food, so I kind of had a tendency for a while to overfeed, and that uh, helped the algae to get started. I mean, yeah. The whole front glass was just coated with algae. Mm -hmm. You can see some on the back glass still. Now, do you have a pleco? Do you have a pleco in that thing? No, I do not. I use mm -hmm. Nerite snails. Okay. They're excellent in cleaning up the algae, but not when you overfeed. Now, about how many snails have you put in there? I know they don't breed. But no, no, they need uh, brackish water to breed. Right. But you can see some of their eggs in there. They still lay the eggs in spite of the fact that they can't um, 
develop. Now I see a lot of small snails. They look like those. Uh, oh, what the, do you call uh, them? Asian live bearing snails. Okay. And there's too many of them right now because again my overfeeding. Mm -hmm. So if I cut back on my feeding, I think I can help solve both the problems, both the algae and the uh, the growth of too many snails. The other plant that looks so beautiful here is the one in the left-hand corner. That that. Uh, lily plant, right? That uh, red lily that is doing beautifully. Mine was growing nicely for a while. It got lost under that Abergenny or whatever it was, and the uh, Madagascar lace plant, and it only came up with about three or four leaves. But this thing's got huge leaves. Oh yeah. And at least it looks like 20 leaves in there. It's doing beautifully. About that. And uh, as a matter of fact, there were two other plants in there with it that I just took out and threw away. Wow. wow. Because it, it was just getting to be too jungle-like yeah. and uh, too much growth in there. Now, something, I, I use an outside filter and you use these uh, sponge filters here? Well, that's a pre-filter. Okay. The, the, there are outside filters on the tanks. Oh, so I see. You can see. There's two on that tank. Yeah. But, so how does that work? One, how do you clean them? Well, the pre-filter you have to take off and, and uh, rinse it out regularly. What's regularly for and, you? Uh, about every two weeks. Okay. And that, that's pretty gummed up with the... Uh, yeah, it gets very gummed up. So as a result... But it helps prevent the regular filter from being cleaned as frequently. Right. And you've got two large filters on this, which gets quite a bit of water flow on both sides. Yeah, both of the those are AquaClear filters, AquaClear 70s they call them. They used to be called 300s and they do pump 300 gallons of water an hour. Wow. So there's 600 gallons an hour being changed in that tank. Yeah. And how often do you have to change those filters on the outside? On the outside I do them about once a month. Once a month, okay. But the, uh, the pre-filter I do that every couple of weeks. And so, are you concerned with the snail population in here? And if so, what are you doing about it? At the moment, I am. Yeah, it's uh, it's overgrown with snails. If we were there, there's a way to um, combat it. I've never had a need to do it, but I may have to in that tank. And that is to uh, take a piece of lettuce and boil it for about a minute. It'll it'll uh, cause it to die. You put it the lettuce then in the tank with a rock on top of it. They're attracted to it because it's decaying material that the snails love. And then you just take the leaf out, or the lettuce out, and uh, all the snails that are on it, you can just throw it away. I've tried that, and i got to tell you, most of the snails got off that piece of oh, vegetation they? before I could get it out of yeah, the water. I've never, I've never done it, but I, I've heard In fact, that. what I tried to do is put the, the vegetation, the leaf, right. in a net. Oh. And, and leave it lay there, oh, and that way I could just pick up the net. Okay. Didn't work so well. Okay. What did work for me is something that you and I have talked about, and that is a couple clown loaches. Oh, one, yeah. You don't want one clown loach, you need a yeah. couple. But two clown loaches in there, and I'm telling you, my experience was I had an infestation of snails. Uh, in the evening, uh, yeah. especially with the lights off, they well, came up the front of the tank. the loaches tent. can do away with their snails with no problem. But they would eat the nerite snails also. Oh, yeah, okay, that's true. So that would be a problem for All me. Right. That's well, why I stay away from the loaches. From that infestation, when I put the, uh, yeah, the clown loaches in there, they were gone in a day. And I mean, I oh, had yeah, a the, large I infestation. That's right. No, I agree. Then, the, then they the do two, an excellent job. Then the two clown loaches died, and I've never had a snail population build back up again. Hmm. And so right now, of six clown loaches, two in each of the three big tanks, uh, the only two that are left are the ones in the office tank, that small 30-gallon hex tank. Huh. And they're doing just fine. The other two, and I never did, I never succeeded in getting rid of the ick that developed oh, on that's them. that's right, you were told. Because they're, they're uh, scaleless fish. Yeah, they're susceptible to that. But and there is medication you can use, even though the manufacturers will tell you not to use it on those... Uh, type fish. Or, or in a planted tank? Uh, no, the medication is safe in the planted tank. Is it? Yeah, the, if you use the right medication, but you have to use it at a strength that's uh, about 60 to 70 percent of what would normally be used. It'll take a while longer to cure the ick, but it'll still work. 
Now, I'm, I'm guessing, and I don't know this, so I'm asking for advice, okay? Mm -hmm. I'm guessing that a fish with ick on it, if I were to take that and put it into a smaller container and treat it, the ick is still in the tank that I took the fish out of. That's right? true. Yeah. So I put it back in, it's going to come up with it again. Because I just right. noticed today, you were talking about the pearl gouramis before. Uh, yeah. One of my pearl gouramis, I see the ick building up on it. I oh, said, oh, okay. geez, okay, got to do something about that. Somebody at the fish store uh, a couple months ago said, oh, here's the answer to that. Put them in uh, a warmer, you know, like 84 degrees, and some salt, non-iodized salt, of course, okay. and it'll wipe it out in just a couple of days. Okay. Uh, now, you're taking the fish into a different environment, so the ick is still in the tank, but I didn't get around to trying that. I did try to put it in a plastic uh, container hanging in the tank okay. and tried to treat it that way. It was not successful. Okay. So, I, I don't know what I'm going to do with this particular pearl gourami. The pearl gouramis are so pretty, they do so well, but this one I just happened to notice today before I came you know, out. Those scaleless fish, you have to uh, use them the medication that's available at about 60 to 70 percent of its strength, it'll it'll take uh, maybe a week or 10 days to cure the ick because uh, you have to kill the ick that's on the fish and also the new ick that continues to develop. So by using the 60 to 70 percent, you're it's still getting, effective even on scale fish. But you're not fish. killing plants or whatever at right, the same time. Right, okay. if you're using the right kind of medication. Yeah, what kind of medication is it? Do you know offhand? Um, what have you been successful with? I haven't needed it in a long time. I, yeah. I, All right, well, I, if you I, for, come up with it later the, on, I appreciate yeah, I it. Yeah, forget the name of it. I, I might still have some of that medication in my, uh, under my tank there that I can look it up. Okay, good. Let me come back over to the 38 gallon again. Okay. I noticed uh, the, uh, the those catfish in the front there, not the uh, bronze one, but the two stere, what do they call it, stere something? Um, stere... I forget the, I forget the pronunciation of the name, but that's, oh, it begins with an S, I know that. Yeah, I, I haven't either. They're expensive Sturba catfish. Sturba maybe? What is it? Sturba? That sounds right. That and sounds it's, right. it's still a member of the Corridor's family. Yeah, but they're so beautiful. And yeah. I see how well yours are doing and how big they've grown here. They, they're certainly very healthy and busy keeping their tank clean. Yeah, well, they do the job. They, they clean up the excess food that you might be feeding, and they help to keep the tank uh, in good stale. I found a couple of them at the fish factory over there in Bristol, Pennsylvania. And I did buy them at like six ninety five a piece, but they were small. Yeah. I didn't realize how small until I got them home, and boy, they were really small. I mean, they were babies as opposed to the size of yours here. They're beautiful, but I'm surprised they haven't been growing. I've had them for a good month or two, and there's two of them together right now, right in the frame that I've got on the camera. They're beautiful. Right. Look at them working in town. And I'm hoping they grow up into something like you've got here, because, yeah. uh, but they're healthy, and I thought I lost one of them, but then eventually I saw them out there recently, so I know I still have both of them. How many did you get? Two. Two. Uh, again, a seven-dollar fish for me is expensive. Okay. Okay. And, at, and yet, more and more, I've let myself go ahead and buy something for that price. Yeah. And those two, because I love that catfish so much, I thought that would be worth the investment. Mm -hmm. And I'm glad I did. But at the same time, I couldn't believe how small they really were when I got them home into the tank. Uh, at the store, they were in a small tank, as that particular fish store has, and I didn't realize they were tiny. They weren't small, they were tiny, yeah, okay. and they're still tiny. But they're doing okay. Oh, half an inch? Um, I'm trying to look, yeah, about a half an inch. Yeah, okay. that'd be about right. And so I'm hoping that they will grow over time into something as beautiful as yours here. Yeah, well, I'm sure they will. They tend to school. I notice your two are staying together. Yeah, my they, two, they do. Two also. Now, it's funny, the bronze ones always remind me of Ray's tanks. Oh, yeah. I mean, they bred for him all the time. He had, you know, literally 30 or 40 catfish in his tanks just because they kept breeding. Which, which reminds me with Ray. Now, you said that he used, uh, what kind of gravel in his tanks? He used the pool gravel. 
Okay. He would buy the 50-pound bags, you know, which okay. would cost him practically nothing compared to, I mean, I'd well, buy yeah, the small bags well, for $5 what, for a small that's bag. That's what I used to get years ago in the shop, and I would package it up in 15-pound bags to sell to people, but right. a lot of people kept the 10-gallon tanks. They you know, need just 50 the right gallon. amount of gravel for a right. tank. Right. And yet you'd tell people how much gravel you needed in the tank, they would never believe you. Well, see now, I tell them a pound and a half to two pounds per gallon. It's a, you know you could tell from their just their attitude. You got to be crazy. Well, I, I agree with you. I like the deep gravel bed yeah. for being able to keep the roots of the plants oh, into yeah, the absolutely. gravel. But uh, I never figured out with his uh, sand. I'll call it sand instead of gravel. I would have a hard time using my water change apparatus. I have that something that's called a python and you know I bury it in the sand so that right. the fish don't go up and get sucked up sure. when I'm draining. But sure. if, with that kind of sand I think it would just suck the sand up because it's so small and well, light. Yeah, if it's too fine that's true. Well that's what that is. You have difficulty with that. It was a white sand and it was very okay. fine and the catfish loved it. And now, so did the plants by the way. Used in the pool filters for what reason? Uh, they use it as filtering mechanism Okay. in pools. I, I don't know much about pools. I just okay. know that it's part of the filtering system. And uh, Well, the grapple I used to get, I used to sell a hell of a lot of it because, as I say, we package it up in 15-pound bags. I'd get it in 50-pound bags, and it was called number one gravel. That was the grade. Okay. I'd say the, uh, the size of the pebbles were about maybe a sixteenth to a thirty-second of an inch. Mm -hmm. Now I don't know if Ray had Ray's uh, sand was finer than that. I, it, it, I don't know like how to sand. grade it. What's that? More like beach sand. Yeah, even finer than beach sand. Finer than beach sand. Okay. So that's, but he never had a problem with it. But I, I don't know how he changed his water. He may have just used a surface uh, yeah. drain of some type. His was in the basement. He had a basement drain, and he had his. Uh, his basement sinks right there. I mean, the right. ideal situation. Right. If his tanks overflowed, it was no big deal. It was just the basement, That's and then right. we go down the drain. Sure. I'm in the living room. You know, yeah, yeah. like that, right? No, I understand. <laughs> but anyway, uh, so I don't know how he did that, but it worked out fine for him. And I've never tried it myself, and uh, just always look back and say his his catfish were breeding all the time. In fact, he had his wife down there one time. And he was explaining, and all of a sudden, a female came over and laid eggs right on the glass in front of her, and oh, we caught it. Uh, we caught it on film. That's it's up on one of our YouTube. That's pretty neat. And he said, uh, you know, she got to see it firsthand. Yeah. Pretty cool. Yeah. 